What's going on guys? Pete with Crunch Time Coaching and today I want to help you with the return of serve. I want to talk about the three key differences between a return of serve and a normal ground stroke. And the reason why I'm making this video is through the years I've noticed most of my students tend to think about their return of serve like a normal forehand or backhand and it leads into all kinds of problems, specifically these three issues that I'm gonna talk to you about today. So let's get right into this video. The, the first and number one thing I want you to think about when you are going to hit a return of serve versus a normal ground stroke is the mindset, knowing that it's a, a, a different event. Um, if you watch Andre Agassi and Novak Djokovic, look at their eyes. Like go back, watch some YouTube videos, Watch their eyes and the way it gets really intense when returning serve. There's this intense focus. Not to say that when you're hitting your ground strokes that you don't want to be focused and concentrated. Of course you do. Whenever you're playing tennis, you want to be focused. You want to have great concentration. But I do feel that you want to approach it differently mentally, okay? So when you're hitting a ground stroke and, and if you've ever done this before, you know what I'm talking about. You get into what I call a flow state. Like you're just moving great, you're flowing great, there's a great rhythm to the point that you're playing, okay? And that's what you ultimately want to get to when you're hitting your ground stroke, because you want to kind of get to a flow state where everything feels good, there's a great rhythm. When you're returning serve, it's a different type of focus. I think it's a more intense, focus so you want to have a more intense focus and it's more of a, a singular event like I think about getting that return back and then like it's another completely point a, a, a completely different point once I get into the rally all right um, first of all you're cornered right so you're cornered so you're completely and we're talking about if you're playing somebody who's got a really good serve okay they can hit they can hit corners they have pace they have spins it's difficult to return. That's what type of serve we're talking about today. So you want to get this intense focus and you want to take it almost like a challenge. Like you're going to, you ever go to, to uh, a restaurant or bar and they've got the bull and you're trying to ride the bull, okay? That's, that's what, I've never tried that by the way, but that's what I kind of think about when I'm going to return the serve. I know that it's an intense event. I know that I'm being attacked viciously by my opponent. They have got a good serve. They're really looking to bring it. So you've got to get way down low, really get that body down low in a position and take on this mentality of playing good offense in your defense, okay? Because if you get into a state to where you're kind of like a deer in the headlights and you're like, oh, what's coming at me? It's gonna knock you right over. So another thing that I like to think about and tell my students is you want to imagine like it's a football game and that running back or the wide receiver is running down the field at you and you're basically going to stand your ground and then go after that football player, right? So it's the same thing with, with the ball coming at you with the serve is you don't want to wait on your back heels. You want to be staying here. You want to think about, okay, the best way to attack this offensive shot, the best way to defend it is with good offense. So I want to be here and really going forward to the ball. Okay, so if you've got that mentality that it is different than a ground stroke, you're starting off in, in the right way because it is not a ground stroke. It's coming really, really fast and all kinds of different spins. And so you've got to look at it differently. Number two, and probably the most important thing, is your footwork is completely different on a return to serve than it is on a ground stroke. Again, when you're back at the baseline and you're in a ground stroke rally, there's a flow and a rhythm to it. And, and I like to tell my students to get into what I call a boxer kind of shuffle. So it's hitting, getting in this boxer shuffle, split step. Hitting, boxer shuffle, split step. Back and forth like that. That's what a rally is gonna feel like, especially if you just start out hitting with a friend, not even a match. That's kind of what you feel like when you're hitting the ball. Again, return to serve is nothing like that. So that's not really gonna work because of the intensity of the serve coming at you. Because of that singular event of something very challenging happening, you can't do the same thing. 
So what we want to do for our footwork, and this is something that you want to practice, you don't want to just watch this video and assume that you have it, because most likely you will not. Whenever I ask a student to show me the footwork on a return of serve, it's one of the most challenging things for them to do, because they've never thought about it or practiced it. So there's a couple different ways to go at this, but uh, it's also very similar. So let's take a look at like a, a Novak Djokovic. A, a lot of players, especially with, with double-handed backhands, they usually have their feet relatively even, and it's very, very important to have a wide base. You want to get those legs outside of your shoulders, and you also want to get down low. A lot of my students, I, I tell them to get down low, and they'll go like this. Like, really, really get down low, stick that booty out, and your chest is forward. And think about something coming at you, coming to attack you, and you're getting ready to make a dart one way or the other way. You really want to go after this ball, cut off angles as the serve is coming. So you're getting down very, very low, and you're really, really studying. Again, it's kind of like hunting, okay? You're really, really studying the ball and your opponent. So as they're bouncing their ball, as they're bouncing that ball, you start to focus in on that ball, right? As they place it in their hands right here, you start to really look at the ball. Okay, again, it's like hunting, it's intense. It's an intense event, you're taking on the challenge. And then as you see that toss go up, this is when you wanna start that split step forward because then as they go to strike the ball, now your, your split step might be a little bit different timing based on how high or low they toss their, their serve, their serve toss is. So that could change, but in general, once they start to rise up here, this is when I'm going to take a split step forward and land. Okay, and now here's where the footwork gets much, much different than a, um, a ground stroke. Okay, so when we go and we're taught our first lesson, I remember my first lesson on the tennis court was rack, rack it back, step forward, and hit. Okay, and I, I know that there's open stance, and I love open stance forehands, but I still think that's a good first lesson for most people is get the racket back, step forward, and hit. Hear that timing? Back, step, hit. Now, if you take that same approach when you're going to hit a return of serve and someone's got a big serve, so you split step, you land, and then you go racket back, step forward, and hit, you're gonna hit a lot of balls right here at your waist. You're gonna be very, very late for a lot of serves coming at you. So if you watch Serena Williams, Novak Djokovic, two of my favorite returners, but they all kind of do this. I'm just using them as the standard, but all the pros do this. The timing changes a bit. It changes from racket back, step forward, and hit, to you split step, you get set, you hit, and then you step forward many times. Sometimes they don't even step forward. Sometimes they'll just land and hit that open stance, right? But often, it's that split step, land, hit, step. And notice how I'm coming to the ball with all that. All right, so you've got to change your footwork and you wanna practice that over and over again. Imagine that serve is coming. Lots of people will not do this, even though I'm pleading with you to do this. Imagine yourself here, there goes the serve. Step forward, get set, hit, through. It's a great workout. You can do this like 10 times in a row. You're down here. And you do that over and over again. Notice, it's the hit and then the step. Boom, boom, hit step. Right like that. Do that over and over and over again. So that's the second key difference is that footwork. You can see it's a completely different rhythm than I was showing you for your ground stroke. Okay, and number three, and most importantly, is if you're in a steady rally with somebody who hits about your pace, you're gonna be able to take a bigger backswing. In general, I like short backswings, but you're gonna have more freedom to take a much bigger backswing, and you're gonna have a lot more time in a ground stroke rally than you are in a return to serve. So when the ball's coming, it's fine to get that nice unit turn and that racket right here and then out here and then swinging and taking nice big swings with the ball. You can see there's lots of even players on the tour, not, not as many anymore, um, but there are still some that 
come here and do a ground stroke and they've got the racket back behind right there they'll have that and they can still get away with that and hit great shots they're most likely not doing this on the return of serve even though that they still do this on their ground stroke and they get away with it some players you'll see that i think i saw sloan stevens the other day doing a video and i saw her racket go behind there and she's got great ground strokes don't don't say well she doesn't have good ground strokes she's got amazing ground strokes but i don't think she's doing that on her return of serve i think she's got to shorten up so what I want you to think about is this, and, and you might even want to write this down because this is a big deal. You're going to take a bigger backswing than you want to when you're going to return serve. Like you might want to repeat that five times. You are going to take a bigger backswing than you think you are and then you want to, myself included. So what I focus on if I'm doing some shadow stroke work or just imagining my mind, I'm imagining that I keep my racket out in front of my hips and my stomach, that it's here and then I go forward. The return of serve, when you're really on fire and you're playing somebody who's got a big serve, it feels like in between a half volley and a ground stroke. It does not feel like a normal ground stroke. So what I'll practice is getting that landing and then putting the racket out front. See how that's clearly out front of my hips and out front of my belly by a good almost 12 inches and then through and forward. Because I know once the match starts, that I'm going to be further back than I want to be. Okay, but it will be good enough. Because if you think about getting here on a return of serve, you're probably going to get to there. So I think about being right out there, and then I'll probably be somewhere in here. Which, if I'm timing well and seeing the ball well, then I'm, if I'm having a good return of serve day, it, it all works. So again, work on that landing and then shorten that backswing and going. And doing this drill over and over again, and it's, yes, if you're wondering, is it the same thing on the backhand side? It is the same thing on the backhand side to where, especially the two-handers, they'll come here, they'll land, keep the hands out here, hit, and through. Same thing on the one hand where you would push here and then forward after. Okay, so those are your three key differences. Let's, let's review. Number one is mentality, okay? You want to really take the return of serve as a separate event from the rest of the point when you're returning a really good first serve. And you're trying to get into the point, you're really taking the challenge, it's an intense situation, so you really get that energy up. You really psych yourself up to get into the point. Then once you do that, you can get to more of a flow state with your ground strokes and more of a rhythm rally, okay? Which leads me to point number two, the, the footwork's completely different. When you're rallying, you can get in this boxer shuffle and hit and split. When you're going to return a really, really good serve, you got to get down, you got to get intense. You want to think about attacking something that's attacking you. And then number three is you want to shorten up your back swings. This is huge. And you want to practice this without the ball coming. A lot of people think that they cannot take the return to the next level unless they have someone serving a bunch of balls at them. But almost anybody I teach under a 4 level, if I say show me your show me your technique on your return of serve, they, they just have no idea what to do because they've never thought about it before. So work on what I showed you today and then I promise you, you'll start hitting better return of serve. You'll take your game to another level. That's what it's all about here at Crunch Time Coaching. So I've actually got a free training series for you below. I've got more than one free train series for you. I've got a, I've got a next level free train series. I've got a serve train series for you. You've got a forehand train series for you because I want you to go to that next level. If you like this video, it totally, totally helps the channel and makes me feel good if you can give this video a like. And if you have any questions on anything that I've talked about today or even a disagreement with anything I've said, leave it in the comment section below. I love to read your comments and respond. So thanks so much. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching signing off. See you on the next video.